in London, the past couple of days and weeks have been a nightmare. This is because of the spite of teenagers killing one another. A number of people have asked me, they've reached out to me and said, uh, but why aren't you saying anything about what's happening in London? To be honest, the truth is that I've been, I've been like numb. I'm, I've been so like numb and I really don't know what to say. 50 teenagers killed in London between January to now. And in my mind, I've just been going through it and I'm like, okay, what am I going to say? I don't even know what to say because it doesn't make sense. So I've been thinking about it. Even last night, one of my bros said to me, Auntie, you've got to say something about it. You've got to do a blog about it. Then I said, okay, I'm going to research it, look into it, and then, you know, summon the courage to say something. Because, to be honest, I'm just, it's, it's one of these cases whereby you are so scared, you're so afraid, you almost want to wish like, you can just, by being quiet, you can wish it away, or you can, you can just close your eyes, open it, and it will disappear, the issue will disappear, it won't be there anymore. But, unfortunately, this is real life, you can't just wish things away. Then this afternoon, a, a neighbor of mine sent me this video that really put everything into perspective. So I'm just going to do a reaction to this video because it kind of like put everything into perspective in terms of all what I was struggling with, what to say, what the issues are, who are the vulnerable children and all that. So I just want you to take a look at this video and then I'll come back with the rest of my thoughts. I, you're still on the street? I ain't on the street fam. These youths are on the street for man. These youths yeah. are on the street moving the food for me, fam. I'm not on road, fam. I'm the I'm the I'm the I'm the man I'm I'm the I'm the man they come to. I don't need to be on road. What I need to be on road for, fam. So you get the young so you you get the young people to of do. Of course, fam. All it takes is a bit of encouragement. You get me? No no you wants no seven pound twenty hour a job, fam. You get me? When I showed him this, you get me? Like, that's all it takes, fam. How long does it take to make that kind a of couple money? days, my G. Couple days. A man am I slaving away for a fucking paycheck when they can get this in a couple days, fam. Think about it, lad. Yeah, but so, but, but, but the young people see money. Yeah. Uh, and they, and and I guess you guys kind of glamorize that money. Of course we glamorize. We glamorize it because we get it. Man gets dough out here. You get me? So where do the young people fit into all of this? They just eat. They're easy targets, fam. You get me? They're easy targets. They don't want to be on. They don't want to be working no job, fam. In debt from uni and then fuckery. Man, just encourage them. There's easy pee to be made out here. Push, push, push some packs. You get me? Push some food for man. And man will get that dough. Simple. It's not rocket science, Maggie. So the young people coming up now have got to look out for people like you. Not necessarily, because I look out for them. All right. I target them. If I see a man is, if I see a man is an e easy target, man is targeting him because I know he's going to get this pee for me, and I know that he wants pee. But what's the easy target? You understand? Are you talking about any child? Fam, any, no, no, no. You got to look at, you got to look at the ends. You got to look at what youths are growing up in single parent households. You got to look at what man's environment is. You get me? What man's parents are doing. His man's parents are crackhead, his man's parents on food, you get me? They're the easiest targets there because they're tainted, you get me? They got no other option, you get me? Yeah, yeah. So they're no, the I easiest ones I'm to target, Sam. I'm hearing what you're saying, so you're like, saying like you're making, vulnerable. No, nah, you're making it, like, the way you're making it sound, Yeah. it's like it's a hard thing, fam. This ain't hard, you know? Any one of these youths passing, man, can approach them, fam. Yeah, but what if they... Right, so you're saying that you could approach any youth what school age school age specifically my g specifically like specifically. them early them early teen ages is the best way to the best age to catch them fam <laughs> man ain't going to school you thought you think you think you think man's putting on his uniform in the morning and saying yeah bye mom, i'm going to school nah fam he's coming to me and he's putting his tracksuit on and he's pedaling on the road fam you get me then he's going home after school he's saying yeah mom i had a good day at school you get me so, or yeah. on the flip side now you got the mums that want to question man for not working. Go on, go on. So on the flip side now, you got the you got the mums questioning their youths why they're not working. Where's my rent? Where's this? Where's that? If he's just dashing a little a little five bills on the table, you think she's asking questions? 
You think she's gonna say, oh, where'd you get that money from? She don't care, she's got her five bills, she's nice. Get me, this is the, re this is the reality of the road, fam. So the reality of the road is that some of the parents know their children. Of course they, d come on, come on. Well, you think all these youths on the road, you think their parents don't, you think some of their parents don't know? They know what they're doing. They know the consequences. You get me? But if they... <laughs> but what about you? What, you've been on the road so long, fam. What you're doing is, what, what you're doing is you're entrapping young people That's to do point. your work. Yeah? What? Because man don't want to go jail, fam. What, you think man want to sit in a bin? If man, can get, if man can get five youngers to peddle food for man and I avoid jail, fam, what? Where's the... That's a win-win, blood. It's a win-win. They come to me, you get me? They drop the pee, they get more food, and they go about their business. Well, like, what? There's no risk. The only risk is any, if anyone's going to snitch, but, fam, I showed you what I've got in my pocket. You get me? That's the uh, consequences, is, you, know, you, you know, I know this... But you know, our young young people are dying on the streets now. That you know, That's what I mean, the they're way dying it is, on fam. the there's, streets. There's young people dying everywhere, fam. Look how many people are getting shanked every day, shot every day, fam. What, what would you what, say about that? What do I say about that? That's the way the road is. <laughs> what, like, what if man if man's gonna rob my one of my youths? I'm gonna tell him, fam, you go and get your pee back, blood. You go and get your drugs back. You get me? Do what if, do whatever you have to do. If they need help with that, obviously man's gonna provide, fam. Simple. We're looking at these young people thinking they're getting into trouble. Where all the time. There is, fam, I'm I don't want to say it like this, but there are people like you out there, and I've known you for, for a long time, there are people like you out there that are basically recruiting them. Fam, listen, yeah? These youths ain't got dads, fam. They look, they look up to me, fam. I'm a, I'm a ro if, you want, if you want to put it like that, I'm a role model to these youths, fam. You get me? Who else are they going home to, fam? What other male figures have they got to help them, fam? You tell me, innit? Man ain't gonna force no you to do what he don't wanna do, innit? But man, man's never, ever had a you tell me no when I introduce him this life. Never had a you say no to me, fam. Because he wants that pee. You get me? When he sees on the yeah. first day, he's making a grand, fam. What? So it's all about the money. So, they, so, so, so all, everything that's happening on the streets is all about making easy money. Easy money, fam. It's as simple as that, fam. And if the young people don't want to... All right, I'm going to give you a scenario. If a, if a young person owes you some money, what, what then? Because they're right. young, they don't know what they've they got themselves into. They best get that into. P, fam. This is what I'm saying to you. I let them know the consequences, fam. Like, I'm not letting them go into this blind. If you're working for me and you fuck up, you lose P, you get robbed, you best get that back. Best get that back. Simple. You best get that back or... Whew, let me, simple as that, fam. You must think it's just me out here, blood. There's a gang of, there's a team of us, you know? There's a team of us, fam. And it's easy, it's easy. It'll be disturbed at this South London, it, East it London, North London, fam. This is all happening, fam. It don't matter what part of London. It don't even have to be London, fam. This is the way it is. With the young people. So, from the video, you can see that um, this is uh, is an issue that is not likely to go anywhere soon, that we cannot just pray away or wish away. Because these young adults are out there on the street of London, everywhere in London, actively looking for vulnerable children to recruit into their gang to sell their drugs for them. And because they are targeting the vulnerable children, those children, at the end of the day, are getting into what they don't know. They are selling drugs. And before you know it, they are stabbing one another and killing one another. So, like you heard from the horse's mouth, he is one of the recruiters out there in London. So they are looking at children from vulnerable families like single parents' home, children who have no fathers, children who have no male role, role model to look up to. So these are the children they are looking up to. Children from low-income families, children from homes where they are on benefits, or children from home where the, uh, the parent is on substance abuse, on drugs, so these are the children that they are actually targeting. So they will go out there in the streets and they will approach these children and entice them. They will entice them and tell them about the quick money they are able to make um, if they join them or if they work for them. So they put them to work. And being children, they are very vulnerable. They are gullible. They don't really understand. And, be and because this, most of these uh, children are already going through issues at home, you know, from, you know, parental or family breakdown and things like that, then they are so easy 
to think, oh, this guy is a bro. He cares about me. He's a, he, after all, he looks like me, so he must, you know, have good intention for me. So you see the, what the issues are. Then he goes on again to explain what the lure is, why these children are so easy to fall into, uh, to, to become prey to these to this gangs or to these recruiters who are out there looking for vulnerable children. So it's the law of easy money. Who doesn't want easy money? These children, probably their parents, you know, they don't, they don't have, they are just struggling to get by, to get money to eat, to feed, to feed, to pay the bills and all that. Or young adults who maybe they didn't have, they couldn't go to college, they couldn't go to university and they are home and the parents are putting pressure on them to bring money to contribute to the bills. So they target those children. They'll show them the money that they can make. I mean, even for an adult, you tell an adult that they can make a thousand pounds in a, in a day or in two days. It's something that people, most people will be very likely to fall to, to fall victim of because everybody wants money. So these children, they don't know the risk because they won't tell them if you go out there, there are other gangs out there who might stab you, who might kill you or whatever. You can hear from the horse's mouth. What can we do? Every parent is paralyzed with fear. You can't lock your children in the house. They've got to go to school. They've got to go out. They've got to go somewhere. You can't follow them everywhere. You can't be running them to school and back. So what can you do? So these are the little tips that I've been, I've been able to come up with that I think will help parents. If your child is not attending school, make sure that you have contact, direct contact with the school and they have your numbers, your email address. If your child is not going to school, that the school will let you know. Ensure that your child is going to school. If your teenager is coming home with things that you didn't buy for them, they are wearing new shiny trainers or new phones or gadgets that you didn't buy for them, then those are, those are likely signs that they've been targeted or they, they've joined a gang. Other things are like, if you need to know your friends, your children's friends, some, a lot of parents don't really know who their, their children are hanging out with. They just go out, they come, you know, they do as they like. So, obviously again, because maybe it's a single parent family, maybe the parent is working, trying to, you know, make ends meet and all that. But because of the epidemic, which this knife crime has become now, and because of the number of teenagers that are being murdered on the streets of London daily, you as a parent, you need to be very vigilant. Please be vigilant. Check your children, talk to them. You know, African parents have, have a way of, you know, being very authoritarian and very rigid and, you know, they don't really, and the children don't feel very free to talk, talk to us sometimes. But in these occasions, with what is happening now, I don't think putting fear on your children or, you know, not creating that avenue of communication is going to help. You need to talk to your children, please. It's not only boys alone. Both girls, girls are among the children that, that, have been, that, have been, that have been killing one another as well. Please talk to them. Find out what is going on in their lives. Find out if they have any anxiety or any fear. If they are being bullied, you need to ask them to talk to you. What I usually do with my own children, I tell them, whatever is going on, talk to me. Talk to me. You can talk to me. And I promise there won't be any repercussions. But if you don't talk to me, if I find out, then you're likely to get discipline. But I want you to tell me. So you encourage them because teenagers struggle to communicate. They, they struggle to open up. So you need to draw out this information from them. Watch their moods. If they're on their phones, know what they are, who they are connecting with, who they are talking to. Things like that. And then if they start coming up, coming home with money, I, like what the young man, this young devil said in this video that, uh, you know, that some parents are aware of it. That they will collect money and bring home and put on the table and the parents will take it. If your, if your son or daughter is coming home and bringing money to give you, you don't know where the money is coming from, then they are likely to be in a gang because they are not working and they are bringing money. Where are they getting the money from? So these are the things that you can do to ensure that you monitor your children actively. Then of course, what can we do as Christians? We have to pray. We have to keep praying. Not just praying, we have to keep covering them with the blood of Jesus, soaking them, bathing them, whatever you can think of. We have to just keep praying and then we keep talking to them and reminding them daily. The most important thing is that these children need to be in school. They've got to be in school. Because it's when they are not in school that they are roaming the streets of London that they become targets. I don't know about how, how schools are in, in, in other parts of London, but where I live, if your child is not in school, even if it's late, the school will text you. They will call you to let you know that your child is not in school. Then you have to ring back. If you're not getting texts or you're not getting messages from the, your child's school, you need to make sure that you, you go there, give them your, your, your number and your email address so they can contact you. A lot of Nigerian children, immigrant children, are being slaughtered on the streets of London daily. It's not, we, we Africans have a way of saying it's not a portion, it's not a portion. But we're not doing everything, anything 
you know actively to ensure that it's not it doesn't befall us it's not our portion really by the grace of god but what i'm saying is that please parents Pay attention to what's going on in your children, children's life. It's not about work, work, work. Some parents will just go in the morning. They'll come back at night. By the time they come back, they don't even care what's happening in the children's life. They don't have any relationship with their children. All they feel is that once I pay the rent and I feed you, I buy clothes on your body, my, my responsibility is done as a parent. No, we are in a war with these agents of darkness. This is the war they are waging against our children. They are waging a, a, a war against the destiny of our, the future of our children. And God will not allow them to win. And for us, as parents, this is our active role to ensure that we are talking to our children. This video, please share it with as many parents as you can who live in London and outside London. It's not limited to only South East London or East London or North London. They are everywhere. They are everywhere recruiting. Like you heard the man said, they are recruiting. Looking for people to put in their gang to sell their drugs for them. Check your children's school bag when they come back. Ensure that don't hide things from them like, you know, you don't want them to know about drugs. Tell them. What drugs is? Tell them this is what drugs is. This is what it does. If somebody meets you on the streets of London, there, somebody you don't know, they start talking to you. Run! Shout! Call for help! Don't talk to strangers. Don't hang around school. That one is very important as well. Tell your children when they finish school, they need to come home. Explain to them, like, because teenagers have a way of resisting. Anything you tell them, they feel like, oh, you don't want me to go out, you know. They are rebellious. So you have to actually advise them because I find that when you talk to them like mature people or you, you really sit them down and talk to them, it sinks in them just shouting all the time and saying, I'll beat you, I'll do this, I'll do that. Tell them the dangers are out there. Tell them, if you finish to please come home, don't go and hang around chicken, chicken and chi uh, chip shop. You see a lot of school children, after closing, they don't come home. All they do is that they hang around because there's nobody that is going to ask them. If they have a phone, make sure that you are monitoring them. School closes at half three. If they are not home by 4, 4 30, 5 o'clock, phone them, find out where they are. Please ensure that you are monitoring your children. This is an epidemic. It's a war that they are waging against our children. But by the grace of God, we are going to prevail. Please share this video. Tell your children, share it to as many parents as possible. Let us spread the word around that the enemy is after our children. They are, they are, they are after, they are attacking and we have to fight back. We have to gain the trust of our children. Ensure that we are actively working as well to ensure that our children don't become victims. As a parent, ensure that you are giving your children pocket money because that's another issue again. Some parents don't give their children pocket money. You need to, as, as soon as the child gets to like year, year six, year six, yeah, even before they get into secondary school, please put them on an allowance. Make sure that every week you are giving them whatever you can afford. If it's five pounds or ten pounds, give them. It's not too much. Don't say, oh, I'm feeding you. I'm, I'm paying your rent. I'm, you are living in this house free of charge. I cannot give you money. No, I keep telling parents all the time. The children that we have in this part of this world, it's not the way we were raised that you raise the children. You need to adapt to the society where you live in a way that ensure that these children have some little pocket money so that that money that these gangs uh, are going to use to attract them to trap them will not be you know it will not be attractive to them because they already have their money children will be they will be able to save up their money to go and do whatever they want to buy whatever they want to buy if they come to you that they need something even if you don't have it tell them that okay be patient i'm going to get it for you you know or you can save up the, the allowances i'm giving you the pocket money i'm giving you but parents please african parents Make sure you are giving your, your, your children pocket money. It is very, very important. If a child doesn't have any money on him and he sees other children buying sweets or buying biscuits or buying chicken and chips and they don't have, it is a temptation and that will open the door for this gangster to open, to come in and entice them and say, oh, you want money? I got money for you, bro. I got money for, for you. And then before you know, they put them to start working for them. So these agents are everywhere like i said let every parent be aware of what is going on the vulnerability of these children they, they they are talking about children who don't have male role model children who come from a broken family children who don't have any adults if you are in a single parent family please i'm begging you sisters ensure that you have an adult a male if a male figure a male a good male role model that your children can talk to it can be an uncle it can be a friend it can be a church member whoever just make sure that there's a, a there's a, a man in those children's life that they can talk to or that can tell them this is what it means growing up because these are the kind of children that they prey on please let's make sure that we are doing everything we can to ensure that our children are safeguarded it is our responsibility to safeguard our children and god will help us in this work in the name of jesus amen